All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Raka, Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders. A great millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopefully elect. All right, out there pushing this word in sincerity and truth. <clears throat> Without subjection to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, okay? And his order, you know what I mean? So, hey, I want to do this lesson for a little while now, you know, a... Hey, you know, Salakia to the brethren, you know, Salakia to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, first and foremost. I didn't get this out sooner, it's all through the spirit, but you know, hey, the water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for allowing me to put this lesson out yet and still. All right, so this lesson is going to be entitled, write, the, write These Words in Your Heart, something to that effect, okay? Because the angle I'm going at is, you know, starts off, let's just start off with the first scripture. Uh, Amos 8 and 11. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh power, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Most High. You know, and that's the angle I'm taking with this, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, us brothers, you know, um, and this is a very good attribute to have, something that I lack in, but brothers are very good at knowing exactly where scriptures are located and being able to find them in the in the book very, you know, very quickly. It's something I struggle with sometimes. But I'm usually able to quote things, you know, through the spirit. And um, there's going to come a time where we may not have these physical books in front of us, where we're going to need to have these scriptures written into, into our la'ab, you know, our heart, our mind, you know, as the word la'ab uh, dictates in the Hebrew, you know. <clears throat> we're going to need to have these scriptures written inside of us so that we may be comforted and guided during the time of Jacob's trouble, you know? And I just had a couple of precepts just kind of backing up, um, you know, this 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 concept that popped into my mind a few days ago, you know, in a Lord's will, this will be edifying. So I'm just going to read some of these scriptures. Deuteronomy 6 and 6. Uh, actually, I'll start at 5. And thou shalt love Yahweh thy power with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. Let's just get that word. You know, just to go, just to show what this is La'ab. It should be La'ab. Deuteronomy 6. And verse 6. So it says, La'ab. Inner man, the mind, the will, the heart, the soul, your understanding, you know. Labab. Let me make sure. Yeah, because that is Bayat. Labab. I thought it was Laab. I think in some cases it is Laab. Let's see if I can find that. Probably not gonna be in here. I'm probably gonna have to pull up something else in the blue letter just to, uh, yeah, just to find it. <coughs> Excuse me, it's <coughs> lucky. Um, let's see here. Let's just get heart here. Get strong. So 3820, 3820, 3824. So 3824 is Labab 3820 is Lab or Laab, which is inner man, will, mind, will, heart, understanding. So it's basically the same thing. Inner man, mind, will, heart, soul, understanding. So I guess there's certain, you know, little differences, but they're pretty much the same words. So Labab, Laab, Lab, you know, pretty much the same thing. So, you know, Slaki, like let's just continue. Deuteronomy uh, 6, and I'll start at verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart or thy mind, thy inner man, thy understanding, and make them a part of you. You know, when the scriptures say eat this roll, you really have to eat this roll. You know, there's a concept in, um, let me just get this. Eat this roll. And I'm, I may have this. Yeah, I actually do have it. Thank you. Oh, it's lucky. Close it. <clears throat> Get this out. 
this closer to me. Okay. Ezekiel 3 um, and 1. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll, which is talking about the scriptures. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness, you know? And the point I'm going to get here is in here later. But there's this concept, you know. Let me see. I don't know if I'm going to find it. There's a show I've watched before. And basically, I don't really want to go into that one. So basically, there's a show called Toriko that I used to watch, you know, and, you know, of course, it's got this little bullshit in there. I haven't, you know, watched it in a while or whatever. But anyway, they have this philosophy and, it, and it's even something that you kind of hear um, outside of that show, you know, and, and it's a common statement. You are what you eat. OK, so when you eat something, it becomes a part of you, you know. It, it 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 basically the 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 philosophy he was going into in that show was that when you eat something it furthers you you know it evolves you it, it becomes a part of you and it plays a role in your development in some form or fashion well this is what the scriptures need to you know when you this is what i picture when it says eat this role these scriptures need to become a part of you you know if we make the scriptures a part of who we are and we really ingest it, we really make it a part of ourselves, then it'll be easier for us to remember what's actually coming across. You know, like it, it's hard for me to remember the actual locations, the numbers and the, you know, chapters and things of that nature sometimes. But I try through the spirit to receive what the scripture is actually trying to say to me. So that I understand the concept of it, so that I understand the lesson that is to be learned out of it. And that's going to be a very valuable trait or a very valuable tool to have in the end times when you may not be able to go to that particular location and say, OK, I know if I go to this chapter, or this verse is going to it's going to say something to this effect. Let's go. Let's get further edification. Let's read that again. It's going to be also very important to have received that lesson and, or that that wisdom into your heart your mind your labab or laab or lab so that even without knowing the physical location or being able to reference it you still understand the concept of it you know and it can still comfort you in that way so let me continue so like i'm, I'm, I'm talking too much Deuteronomy 6 and 6, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, you might be walking up the street, you might not have your sword, but you can still be conversant because you remember, you understand, you know, and when thou liest down, you in the bed, you know, lying down, whatever you might do, you still can talk about it, and when thou risest up, you have those scriptures and precepts in your mind. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And I'm sure some of this stuff is literal, but um, I perceive a spiritual side of this. You know, when you bind them upon the sign, uh, as a sign upon your hand, you, hey, keep, the, keep the book in your hand, you know, while you have it, you know, to the best of your ability. And, and when as it be a frontless in your eyes, you should always be reading it. You should always be looking at it and reading it, you know. So, like I said, I pray this is edifying. Let me make sure I didn't close nothing I need. Okay, I should be good. Job chapter 22 and 22. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thine heart, in your mind. Lay up the words in your mind so that you can remember them. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up and thou shalt, if thou, uh, thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Okay. just read here then shalt thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of ophir as the stones of the brooks yea the almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver for then shalt thou have thy delight in the almighty and shall lift up thy face unto the most high 
Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. You know? Yeah, so you got to put these scriptures in your mind, man. You know? Let them... It kind of goes into that... Uh, that that idea or that thought that I was having whenever I would uh, hear that scripture talking about the, uh, let's see. And then, okay. Matthew 12, 43. When, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So when an, unspeen, when an unclean spirit leaves out of you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Yahweh, you have to feel your mind, your, 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 your temple, your spirit, your inner man, you have to fill it with the scriptures. You have to fill it with the foundation of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai so that it ain't no room for nothing to empty in. So that when, a, when, a, when you have those thoughts of those demons, you can say, you know, nope, nope, scriptures say this, man. The scriptures say this. No, nah, fuck all that. This is what the scriptures say. So now nah, that little bullshit ass thought, you know what I'm saying? You're going to, you're going to, it's going to cause you to what the scriptures say that you should do. Let's get it. Ecclesiastic is 17 and 26. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity, for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health, and hate thou abomination vehemently. So when you're filled with the scriptures and that unclean thought comes in your mind, you hate it. You're like, why in the fuck would I ever do something like that again? Like, no, like you, you, you just like, man, I would never want to do that again, man. No, fuck all that. A hey, Lord willing, that never happens, you know. You have, of course, you fear the most high and you're like, Lord, I don't want to, you know, you, the Lord could bug you out. So, of course, you're like, no, nah, Lord, you know, I don't want that to be the outcome. But because you had the scriptures inside of you, you're like, man, why would I ever, there ain't no hope for a nigga to do some shit like that. So, why would I ever go back? You begin to hate those abominations vehemently on some fuck that shit type of situation. Excuse my language. All right. Proverbs 4 and 4, he taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Let thine heart retain my words. We got to keep these words inside of us. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. You know? So of course, this is the wisdom of Yahweh, is what that's going into, but I'm going to try to wrap this up. Got a few more. Deuteronomy 11 and 18. Therefore shall ye lay up these words, these my words in your heart and in your soul, in your inner man, in your mind, and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. You know, basically going into the same thing in Deuteronomy uh, 6 and 6 was going into, you know. I'll keep reading. And you shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates that your days be multiplied and that the days of your children in the land which Yahweh swear unto your father to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. And that's where heaven is going to be upon the earth and the, and the elect and the one third, you know, believers who are saved out of Jacob's trouble are going to be the first ones to enjoy the kingdom when Yahweh was shy. When Yahweh was shy. Let's continue. Jeremiah 15 and 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart, of my inner man. For I am called by thy name, O Yahweh, power of hosts. You know? So yeah, we gotta rejoice of these words in our in our inner man, in our inner in our thoughts, in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits, in our souls, in our inner our inner thoughts. You know, 
The most high knows our inner thoughts, man. You know, like the brother was talking about in his live stream, the brother not to talk about was talking about in his live stream. You know, he was saying the most high sees what you do with the, when the doors close. Man, the most high knows what you're thinking, man. The most high knows what you are thinking. And if you're not reasoning rightly in your mind, oh, you through, man. If you're not, if you're not, let me get this, man. Let me make sure. This ain't it. Let me see. Yeah, bring it into captivity. Yeah, 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 that's right. Second Corinthians 10 and 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Most High and bringing it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamashiach, of the anointed, of what the word, what it says is Christ here. So you're supposed to bring every thought into the obedience of the anointed. How do you do that? By knowing what's the right thing and what's the wrong thing. How do you know that? By studying the scriptures. You know? Ezekiel 3 and 10. All right. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee. So this is the other half of Ezekiel that I want. That I was waiting to read. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears. See, going right in line with that. Eat this roll, man. You know, and go get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people and speak unto them and tell them, thus saith Yahweh power, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, you know? So you got to take this into you, man. You got to understand, ingest it, eat it, chew it up, swallow it, you know? That's why these scriptures uh, are, are likened unto, uh, you know, food. Let's see here. Get this, verse nine. And one wisdom have built her house; she have hewn out her seven pillars. She have killed her beasts; she have mingled her wine; she have also furnished her table. She have sent forth her maiden; she crieth upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. See, eat this roll, this knowledge, wisdom, understanding, this meat, this milk, spiritual meat, spiritual milk, spiritual honey, spiritual wine. Become filled with this so that them demons can't come back on you. And so that you may remember these things when you don't have the physical scriptures, you know, you're going to need to know this. You're going to need to have this inside of you, man, and believe fully. That's why it's important to understand. Hey, matter of fact, it's going to bring me back to the other scripture that I didn't that I didn't read. But I saw it. I was looking at it, but I didn't read it. Now is the time to read it through the Spirit. Proverbs 4 and 7. Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. So it's cool to get wisdom. But with all thy getting, you need to have understanding of the wisdom that you are receiving. Once you understand it, it's easier to make it a part of who you are. To, to fully digest it and put make it a part of your body. Make it a part of your forward movement and your forward growth. You know? All right? Ezekiel, I think I read this one. Yep. Is there any more? No. Proverbs 22 and 17. Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise. And apply thine heart, thy lob, thy labab, your inner man, your soul, unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. They shall withal be fitted in thy lips. This reminds me of another precept real quick. I'm going to try to wrap this up here soon. Matter of fact, let me reopen that one because I think I need this one. 
No, this is not it. I'm almost done here, actually. Make sure I got KJB. James one. And 22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So we got to be a doer. We got to apply this to it. This has just been just going all with the continual theme that's, that I've been going into through the spirit. We got to apply this to ourselves, man. You know, this goes for me too, man. We got to apply this to ourselves, but be ye, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and this is James 1. If I just in case I didn't call it and I started at um, 22 and now I'm at 23 for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer. But a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Keep it inside of you. Make it a part of you. Don't forget it. Yeah, you can find it in the book, but make sure you know it. Make sure you understand it because you can find it in the book and copy it and read it. But if you don't understand it, you can't apply it. How are you going to apply something you don't understand that you don't really get? You got you to gotta know it. You got to feel it to apply it. You got to know it to apply it. That's what it truly means to eat it. Digest it. When you digest something down, you break it down to the smallest increment and you take all the nutrients and you and it becomes a part of you. All right. Verse 22 and 18. Uh, I'll start at 17. Bow thou not ear again, I should say, and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee, they shall withal be fitted in thy lips. That thy trust may be in Yahweh, I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have I not written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge? That thy mightest that I might take thee, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that, that send unto thee? So the most high gave us this knowledge so that we can answer, you know. Be ready, be prepared to give an answer, right? And then, then we're going to go to the last tab, and that's going to be it. Okay. First Peter 3 and 15. But sanctify the, mo the most high power in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you of a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And, you know, Part of being ready is having the scriptures, you know, inside of you so that you can pull them up, you know, pull them up or quote them. If you if you in a let's say you in a you, you, you in a situation where you pass them by quickly and, you know, you just got to boom, bam, boom. It, it helps to be able to do that sometimes. But still knowing the knowing the right way that the scriptures are and understanding them fully so that when you pull it out, you can then prove when you have time to pull it out, you can prove and show, see, this is, I wasn't lying. This is exactly what it says. All right, chapter 22. Actually, I'm a, um, Proverbs 23 and 12. Apply thine heart unto instruction and thine ears to the words of knowledge. You know? So we're going to apply our heart unto the instructions of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Apply our soul, our inner man unto these things. And apply our ears to the words of knowledge. So that we may continue to receive correction, the instruction, uh, the proper doctrine, so that these things may lead us on the proper pathway. I pray you brothers was edified, you know, and just like I was edified, you know, it was beautiful as I was pulling together the precepts. I was like the water, y'all watching me, I was shy. So with that, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Haraka Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the whole for the leg. 
Once again, I pray this was edifying. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.